In this lesson, we're going to take a look at using some dimensional constraints in our dynamic blocks, and we're going to talk a little bit about when we would use dimensional constraints as opposed to possibly doing something like a stretch action that we looked at in a previous lesson. So let's take a look. I've got on my screen a rectangle, and I'm going to go ahead and block it, and this time I'm just going to use a shortcut key B for block, and I'm going to call it B1. I'm going to pick my base point down here on the bottom and I'm going to select my objects and I'm going to open in block editor tell it OK and since I have already have a block definition in this drawing called B1 it wants to know if I want to redefine it and in this case I'm going to tell it yes so I'm going to tell it to redefine and I have my rectangle now if I want to have the ability to stretch this rectangle as my block if this were if this block were my block and I wanted to be able to stretch it there's two ways I could do it I could do like we looked at in a in a previous lesson and I could assign a linear parameter to it and then I could give it an action that is a stretch action and it'll allow us to stretch it so let's just do that real quick a little bit of review I'm gonna give it a linear parameter I'm gonna pick my first point here drag over to the second point and I'm gonna do another linear parameter for this distance here I'm going to go to my actions. I'm going to do a stretch action. I'm going to select my parameter, my point that I'm going to stretch by, a crossing polygon to select uh, where I'm going to be stretching from, and another one to select my objects that I'm going to be, that's going to be part of the stretch. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Select my point, stretch, my objects. I'm going to go ahead and check check it out using my test block like we did in the past. And I can see that I have my different grips here. So I can grab and I can stretch. And I can grab and stretch down. So it's working just kind of like we expected. So I'm going to go ahead and close the test block window. and I could save that and uh, use it as my block. Now I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to use some dimensional um, constraints instead. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these parameters that I had set. I'm going to recreate the block now using our dimensional constraints and I can either get it from right here or I can also open up the orthering palette and down here at the bottom I see that I have constraints um, as an option also. Okay so first thing we want to do if we just come in here and we tell it that we want to do a horizontal up here and then it wants to know the value name and the value and I'm just going to leave it as a default and it wants to know how many grips 0, 1, or 2 Basically, are we going to be able to stretch this from both sides or just one side or or is it going to be something that we don't enter directly? So I'm going to go ahead and take the default as one and I'll see that I'll be able to stretch it from this side only. Now I'm going to do a vertical. I'm going to pick my two points. Let's keep the defaults on that. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to test the block. Select my block. Grab my grip, and we see that we have a problem. It's stretching only one side. So I'm going to go ahead and close my test block, and that just brings up the point that we have to make sure that we have our geometric constraints as well. Just like in our lesson uh, before, we have to make sure that we use geometric and dimensional constraints kind of together. So I'm going to go ahead and do an auto constraint, and I'm going to pick this rectangle. I'm going to tell it. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to go and test my block again. And now we see that we have the ability to stretch our, our geometry around kind of in the same way that we did uh, before um, whenever we created it using our regular parameters and actions over here. Okay, so you might be asking, well, why, you know, when do you decide when you want to use a dimensional constraint rather than defining a parameter and then assigning an action to go with it? 
And the thing is, is that just like we had the problems right here before, because we had to go and define these different, um, these different geometric constraints, the more complex our geometry gets, sometimes the more of uh, the dimensional constraints that we have to add. For example, if we were just to go in here and just do something simple like offset this line like we did when we had our window um, example in a previous lesson. I'm going to go to home, click offset, and I'm just going to measure a little distance here. And I'm going to offset my line here. And so now I have another uh, piece of the geometry. So now if I go back to my block editor and I tell it to test the block, Obviously, that's not part of our constraints yet, so nothing's going to happen to it. So I would have to come in here, and I would have to assign some uh, dimensional constraints, and I have to define the, the distance here. Like, for instance, I would need to define the distance between uh, these two points. And this would be an example of when I might would tell if the number of grips is zero, because I just want it to stay that size in the block. So I don't I don't have the ability to change that. It's just maintaining it. So if I went through here and I added these linear dimensional constraints on my block, and I'd have to go all the way around. to make sure that they all were defined. So now I have four of them defined. Now I'm going to do a test. And now we see that it works out OK. But for each level of complexity that we add, we have to go in there and, and define those relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just erase all of these. And I'm going to go and delete these constraints that I had set up before. And now I'm back to just the rectangle. And if I go back now and look at my previous method, I'm going to do a linear parameter, linear parameter, stretch action. Kind of the same steps we took earlier. Stretch action. Test. And we see that we were able to recreate that with a lot fewer uh, steps and without having to define all those different dimensional constraints. Now, that brings us to the question, when would you want to actually use dimensional constraints over uh, this other one? And when is it worth it to go through all that trouble? Well, if you, want, if you want to create kind of the relationships that give you the power to the uh, dimensional constraints. For example, if distance 1 and distance 2 had, uh, were related to each other. For example, if distance 2 was always going to be twice the distance as distance 1 or, or you know, one and a half times or whatever, um, then you, you would have to use dimensional constraints then. So as you need to add intelligence to these blocks and, and everything becomes a, f a function or a formula, that's when you start using dimensional constraints. So if you're just doing simple stretches, uh, it's, a lot of times you're going to be better off using the actions and the um, parameters. All right, well, that just kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of the differences between them and a few examples of when you might would use one over the other.